you're seeing my screen? Yeah. So I think you already know all these things, but I'll just you know give you a kind of walkthrough and then you know go for um, configuring this part. Mm-hmm. So compensation grid, um, I think um, the, you, be know, you may be knowing this, um, which uh, provides uh, directions um, regarding to the pay range. Whenever you are assigning compensation grade to any of the job profile or any of the you know um, package, which means that uh, you are defining a pay range for the position actually. So let's say uh-huh. Workday developer is there. Workday developer, uh, the pay while you're getting a compensation grade for that Workday developer role, you are defining pay range that um, compensation range should be between 15 to 20 lakhs. Okay. Uh-huh. And whenever you assign this compensation grade to the job profile, that recruiter who is actually hiring a candidate under work for workday developer position will be uh, you know dealing with the compensation which should be in the range of 15 to 20 lakhs. Nothing below that and nothing above that. So we'll be uh, defining a compensation grade of such kind, which uh, provides information regards the pay range actually. And compensation plan, plan you may be knowing that salary plan, hourly plan, merit plan, bonus plan, alliance plan. So there are different kind of plans you know that we have um, in compensation. So we'll be defining, uh, we'll be creating those plans and as how you know we wanted to restrict to this uh, job profile or this uh, supervisor organization or this management level. So we'll be defining those plans to that particular group actually. So mm-hmm. compensation plans are nothing but um, which provides um, which provides information of um, uh, different pay components uh, that we have in the system. <coughs> okay. And compensation package. Compensation package is nothing but combination of compensation grades and plans. The group of um, compensation grades and plans are, uh, you know, um, the, the are combined. Um, the, the can say can uh, the term that can be called as the compensation package, which groups both the compensation grades and packages will form a compensation package. And uh, for example, if you see uh, our case also, when there, uh, when our compensation package is being offered, it is a mixture of uh, different items actually. One is, you know, mm-hmm. some organizations may be providing a, a bonus plan. <clears throat> some organization may be providing kind of a, a stock plan as part of your compensation package. And some organizations may be providing some kind of alliance plan. You'll be getting this kind of alliance as part of your compensation every month based on your job grade and all. So we'll be defining um, such kind of you know uh, packages, and uh, package is nothing but which is a group of uh, compensation grade and uh, plans actually. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And I do this only... question, Amit. Uh, yeah. How does it feel to be able to see <laughs> compensation of the entire company? <laughs> entire company. Yeah. Uh, entire company in the sense, uh, uh, you mean to say for uh, any top level, uh, you mean to say CEO or uh, yeah, 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 what yeah, is? Yeah. Yes, yes. You should be, you should be having access. I think um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you can go to employee profile actually. If you go to employee profile. Um, no, no, no. Um, for, I, I know how to see it, right? I'll see it uh-huh. overview under overview pay package. I'm asking uh-huh. as a work day being in this field. Uh-huh. For you, right? How yeah. does it feel? Uh, we'll definitely get, you know, we'll be getting a couple of requests. Uh, <clears throat> though I'm not part of, you know, compensation team, but whenever, you know, I develop a total reward statement or compensation annual uh, review statement, we'll be getting a lot of, uh, you know, for uh, CEO, uh, there has to be a kind of different uh, stocks and uh, uh, yeah. statement has statement design has to be different for executive leadership team kind of things. You know, I'll be getting a request and uh, uh, I know that's a kind of, you know, normal thing for us. Uh, whenever we deal with such cases, uh, we'll be, but yeah, the compensation statement, whatever we are designing has to be confidential. And whenever, you know, we are working on this kind of projects, you know, we are restricted uh, our screen, um, you know, to be shown to others. So we'll not mm-hmm. be showing our screen because uh, that deals with, uh, you know, complete organization compensation, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. we'll be designing a compensation statement based on the levels so let's say we have 70 to 80 80 to 90 90 to 100 and CEO. so for each level of a group you know the statement has to be populated in different way with the components that they are actually intended to get 
so not every group you know will be having same kind of component some executive leadership team may, may have you know different stock component called uh, performance stock and um, uh, low level uh, team like vice president level you know will be getting a kind of restricted stock so like that you know different groups will be having different components and uh, accordingly you know, the statement will be populated with different uh, design so whenever we are dealing with such kind of you know huge confidential information so we are uh, you know informed or we are instructed that uh, our uh, this confidential information should not be shown to any of uh, the team members and that's mm -hmm. a kind of you know we'll be signing some kind of document to them uh, pd or ssa i think <clears throat> some kind of you know legal authentication document will be signing and we'll be getting into this project <clears throat> because that deals with a lot of sensitive information no mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll be uh, working with compensation team closely uh, compensation team will be performing core configurations and all uh, related to all the changes and all but my responsibility is to report whatever configuration that they are doing report accurately and whatever i have reported to be presented in the statement uh, what i will be designing so that at the end of the year when annual review process uh, has been uh, released to employees they will be able to access their statement uh, so seeing you know what are all the revised salary that they are getting what are all the additional components you know that they have got as part of promotion so all those things you know they will be able to see in that compensation review statement and if there are any uh, uh, there won't be any kind of mismatch Yes, but if there are any kind of uh, issues are there, uh, we'll be supporting those uh, users, you know, to uh, correct those. Uh, comp but even some organizations, you know, will be maintaining uh, some kind of uh, security, even if I'm part of Workday developer development team. So I'll be not for compensation part. Uh, you know there will be a kind of restriction so you know i should i should be not able to view the compensation of other team member kind of security restrictions that some organizations will be uh, main, maintaining and also kind of specific things like uh, i should be able to view any other employees compensation but i should not be able to view my team members compensation so it's kind of you know security things also will be uh, configuring so that uh, no one from my team will be able to see my compensation but <clears throat> they should they'll be able to see because they are part of workday team they need to support users right they should be able to view the compensation of other team members but not our team members <laughs> yeah, yeah. i've heard we have splunk uh, deployed at our Place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, okay. it tracks uh, wherever you click. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And mm -hmm. do you know how to see that report? Uh, you mean to say there is a kind of you know um, <clears throat> transaction uh, thing you know we have so whatever you know user logs in user performs anything in Workday tenant you know we can report that. <clears throat> not mm -hmm. about I am not aware of uh, Splunk, but. Um, so we can create a report user uh, you know user tracking uh, some data sources there so mm -hmm. when you create a report on that data, under the data source data source so whenever user logs into workday okay it will be tracking whatever you know user will be performing and um, it will be giving the information that let's say compensation uh, tab is there so um, uh, viewed compensation viewed pay slip generated pay slip of uh, different employee kind of task you know that um, uh, report will be returning so we have a delivered um, i think uh, let me show you that um, data source we have a data source we can create within workday only so, so splunk is outside of workday no hmm. <clears throat> but i think uh, i've created uh, some reports you know that tracks uh, user uh, transactions in workday <clears throat> there will be a kind of um, audit and governance team in every organization so they, their job is you know to identify all these changes they will be actually monitoring all the user activities in workday yeah yeah what happened they're not coming
the we have a data source called user activity okay uh -huh. so we'll be actually creating a report with this user activity data source and that will give you complete information whatever user actually <clears throat> performing uh, uh, in work tenant so if he's going to any other tab um, the viewing other employee information or if he's going going to performance tab of other employee seeing what is the rating that uh, manager has given to that employee all those activities you know, will be tracked with this uh, data source called user activity <coughs> that will give you complete information <coughs> of that user who has performed that one so basically we'll um, create this um, <clears throat> for managers managers will be asking um, can we get a kind of user activity report for my team members so that you know, i'll be able to see what they're actually doing in workday kind of you know we'll be giving this to managers uh, as a kind of confidential information not letting anyone know only managers you know, will be accessing this report so they'll be able to see what their team members are doing <coughs> yeah on compensation package and after compensation package we have eligibility rule eligibility rule is nothing but you know which uh, <clears throat> specifies uh, compensation grade or ranges use or uh, compensation grades packages or compensation plans you will be defining this eligibility rule to which uh, you know source you need to assign this thing which uh, group of members you will be assigning this, which organization you will be assigning this. In eligibility rule, you will be specifying eligibility criteria that this group has to be, uh, you know, provided with this compensation uh, grade or, uh, you know, compensation package or compensation plan. So you'll be defining that eligibility rule that this compensation plan will be applicable for this country or this plan is applicable for this group or this employee kind of eligibility rule that you will be defining and accordingly uh, that configuration will make changes whenever you know you're uh, <clears throat> releasing compensation uh, only those group members will be getting that particular kind of contribution <clears throat> okay so come eligibility rule makes that kind of difference you know when you're actually uh, making changes and um, there are certain steps you know that will be seeing uh, in compensation whenever we are actually uh, creating a um, compensation structure <clears throat> our eligibility rule is nothing but you know which will uh, provide you a kind of eligibility criteria for the uh, compensation components okay. you define so whatever you know the compensation plan compensation package compensation grade so whatever you are defining uh, there is a kind of eligibility criteria that you will be defining for all this to which group this component should be applicable kind of rule you know you will be defining and accordingly that um, configuration will enable that kind of piece of component you know on the plan or uh, grade or package will be applicable for those uh, you know the eligibility criteria group members <coughs> okay and um, basically you know, we follow you know some kind of um, steps actually the, the kind of flow whenever we are dealing with the compensation structure one is the first step you know <clears throat> first step comes like define compensation elements Define compensation elements. Define compensation elements is nothing but where you'll be defining grades, <clears throat> grade profiles, and steps actually. And second thing is you'll be defining compensation plans. <clears throat> Third is uh, you'll be grouping um, these um, elements and plans together to make a compensation package. Okay. <clears throat> I can say bundle together. So grades and plans will be bundled together which makes a compensation package <clears throat> okay. and fourth step is create eligibility rules who has to be you know a target members uh, targeted members for these uh, compensation packages or any of other components Def you'll be defining that through eligibility rule 
-hmm. And fifth is you'll assign this eligibility rule to com uh, compensation components, like you know the, um, the eligibility rule, whatever you have defined, that you will be assigning to compensation components. <clears throat> you'll be defining an eligibility rule, and there you'll be configuring whatever components that you wanted to assign this eligibility, uh, assign these components to eligibility rule that you'll be configuring there. Final step is assign comp components to the eligibility rule you have created above. So these are the five steps you'll typically follow in regular um, compensation process. Um, you'll, uh, you know, the kind of workflow I can say. You have to define a kind of uh, elements and then plans and then make a compensation package and um, create an eligibility rule, assign this eligibility rule to the compensation components that uh, you wanted to have as per your organization policy. Okay. okay. These are the, this is a kind of you know flow workflow structure that you'll be following. <clears throat> uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so there are different attributes that I spoke like. Um, um, let me go into one of the profile and show some of the examples. So here you see compensation package, okay? Compensation package is nothing but, which is a mixture of um, grades and uh, you know plans actually. <clears throat> so you'll be creating a compensation package and for a specific group of employees and you'll be assigning um, that to the kind of a different group. Here you see, we've created a non-management compensation package which is assigned to eligibility rule. There is a job family that has been created yesterday. We have seen, right? Uh, yeah. We've seen um, the job family, job profile, job family group and all. So this compensation package has been assigned to this job family so that, you know, whatever components that are defined at this compensation package level will be applicable for this job family group where, you know, we have defined a kind of eligibility rules. So if you come down, you'll see a little more information about um, compensation grade which are part of this package and compensation plan which are part of this package <clears throat> so compensation plans are this one so merit plan information technology and um, so they have defined a kind of eligibility rule for uh, whatever merit plans that is there for information technology should be applicable for the organization called information technology and uh, for finance administration there is an organization called finance administration so all these plans are uh, you know the configured uh, to become a kind of uh, eligible for all this organization through eligibility rules that we have defined. And that's how you know your compensation structure is built in Workday, where you'll be assigning compensation component based on the eligibility rules and based on the you know your organization would have defined some kind of you know the policy that this uh, this job family has to have uh, this uh, compensation component. For for that component, you'll be defining eligibility rule for that particular uh, job family. That's how you know you typically create a compensation package, groups, and uh, grades and grade profiles. So you see here um, that we have a compensation complete compensation package, which is tied up with the grades and plans, which make um, you know which is a mixture of uh, both that has made a compensation package. <clears throat> That's how you know you typically so you so you are part of any kind of configuration team or just you are supporting a comp team. Okay, right. so that only so, so all the configurations you know function, functional people will be actually taking care of all the configurations and um, so you'll be performing any kind of configurations or uh, you'll be dealing with uh, supporting those configurations uh, or enhancing them. Primarily enhancement, right? Uh, and uh, then, of course, little bit support as well. Okay. Okay. So um, that's why you know, in regular compensation, probably you'll be playing around with all the um, assigned um, compensation plans, packages to the employees. Um, if you go to any of the plan, general salary plan, which is actually assigned as a compensation plan. <clears throat> So you can create own uh, your own uh, plan that you wanted to have. 
and assigned to any of the employees so you see here general salary plan has been created and it has been assigned to all employees organization all employees um, it has been assigned and the compensation mm -hmm. element would be a kind of base pay when you check this uh, apply ft percentage it prorates actually so based on the number of working hours that employee is working based on that hours this FTE percentage will be tracked so 50 percentage is 100 uh, percent the compensation that you have defined for hourly employees will be whatever you have defined if it is not 100 percent if it is 50 percent that will be prorated actually so the checkbox that you'll be checking here uh, based on number of working hours um, the compensation will be offered to that employee so there's a reason why you typically select apply FTE percentage. FTE is nothing but it calculates number of working hours. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if you go to any of um, merit plan, you will also see bonus plan, which you are actually looking for. Okay, so if you create any kind of um, plan that is related to um, merit, so you'll be seeing all this process here. So we'll be oh. defining the uh, eligibility rule and um, uh, if uh, employee has completed um, a kind of a three months um, from high date that employee should be uh, eligible to get that merit plan should be able to get that merit amount and um, so we'll be calculating all that time of absence details and all and uh, <clears throat> So compensation matrix is nothing but you know um, which targets your compensation to that employee. Uh, basically, you know, most of the customers will be not uh, going with this compensation prime matrix, but they will be defining a plan eligibility rules. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. kind of restrictions where if employee has completed um, this time, then this employee should be applicable for the merit plan. Kind of all the configurations you'll be making, you'll be providing a currency and a frequency is generally every organization will be having annual a merit process yearly and you'll be specifying yearly annual process. But if you are actually going for half yearly, you can also do that one. And yeah, merit plan profiles. <clears throat> so you'll be specifying kind of targets here, which will not be, uh, you know, applicable for all the employees. You can say target 2%, which will be for the um, tight three cost of living locations. And um, so this depends upon, you know, your um, actual uh, compensation, uh, you know, um, uh, component that you have defined for your employees. And accordingly, you'll be configuring this. So not everyone has to go with this, but yeah, so it's completely depends upon your compensation. Uh, um, policy that you have uh, in your uh, organization so for uh, we'll be creating a lot of merit plans and we'll be next year you know we'll be making them inactive and we'll be you know or editing that and making it changes and all so all those things you know you'll be seeing here uh, as part of you know merit plan events actually so you'll be going here and you'll be seeing when it has been successfully uh, completed um, and uh, if there are any kind of um, uh, cancellations that you need to perform for existing um, compensation component you can perform those cancellations by getting into plan events and canceling that event particularly so that uh, employee will be no longer part of that compensation event so f this will happen very rarely until unless there are any errors that are uh, happened uh, during this compensation event process so you'll be editing that and you'll be canceling that so that's about you know merit plan um, one of the sal one of the you know compensation plan that we have and the, we have also a kind of bonus plan <clears throat> bonus plan is nothing but a kind of um, uh, one time plan that will be offered to employee So there will be a kind of different um, bonus types also. So this is actually a kind of um, uh, plan type as bonus, which is offered um, at 10 percent um, on employee compensation every year, actually. <clears throat> so every year um, as part of we call it as a variable pay and that will be paid. But some organizations you know, will apart from this uh, bonus, so some some organizations will be having different uh, the special uh, bonus plans like um, recently we got a kind of COVID, right? A COVID alliance, a kind of COVID bonus plan, which will give a kind of hardship alliance, uh, uh, some amount of contribution from employer. So that you will be giving and some kind of, you know, 
fitness reimbursement uh, kind of bonus plan you'll be giving as part of your uh, you know create a kind of uh, you you're um, uh, you're allowed to have a kind of you know fitness reimbursement a bonus plan that employer will be providing to you so you'll be you can create a lot of um, benefit plans um, the bo bonus plans actually so bonus plan you'll be actually creating and uh, you'll be configuring um, that in uh, workday as a kind of you know uh, some kind of one time plan so um, you can um, configuring all those things and as similarly we have seen for other areas you can configure that to specific eligibility rule and also you can um, if you wanted to define any kind of specific time period for high date you can also do that one and if you wanted to go with the proration rate <clears throat> If you wanted to perform a kind of proration rate for each of the, uh, you know, bonus plan or one-time plan, you can. Um, um, there is a kind of uh, um, the, uh, kind kind of configuration called compound uh, proration rate, which will actually uh, prorate your uh, compensation based on your height. Rate. Let's say for yearly, your uh, you have defined that you know bonus plan has to be 10% or 15% of the salary. But employee has joined in the middle of the year and um, that has to calculate uh, uh, based on that uh, higher date uh, to the, the time period you have defined for completing bonus period. So that will calculate number of months or number of hours that employee has worked and accordingly the specific bonus will be offered to the employee during review process. Mm -hmm. That you will be specifying and But how can you show that how the prorated? So we'll be creating all those things. Whenever okay. you are creating a compensation plan, you know, there is a checkbox called, uh, um, you know, FTE percentage or prorate checkbox will be there. We'll be checking the checkbox and um, that okay. calculates, enabling that checkbox, you know, we'll be calculating that process. And uh, so. These are something you know that I wanted to show before I create uh, these things. Stock plan. So not uh, every group of people you know will be getting a stock. Defined. Uh, it depends upon the grade, job grade that employee um, is eligible for. We'll be defining that specific. Uh, uh, you know the st stock plan for a specific group here you see you know only uh, FNA IT sales and marketing organizations are eligible to get this um, stock plan actually so not every employee will be getting a stop uh, stock plan but uh, they'll be based on their job grade management level and their organization they'll be entitled to get that uh, specific uh, uh, you can see here uh, it is a kind of you know rule that we will be creating so we'll be specifying mm -hmm. organizations and uh, will be giving uh, all those uh, supervisor organization who will be part of that uh, uh, the, a stock plan who will be getting all those stocks actually <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay. so all these things you are seeing will be creating all these things whatever you are seeing here will be creating all these things okay okay so we have enough few minutes not sure if I start we'll be able to complete this complete activity so we'll create eligibility tool for today and probably will continue with other um, uh, like uh, packages or you know in our uh, tomorrow session <clears throat> probably if we start I think you know this is a um, huge activity we don't want to break this one so we'll uh, start with the eligibility rule uh, as a compensation administrator as part of you know compensation team so you will create some compensation rules you know where uh, you'll be defining that um, this compensation will be eligible for this uh, uh, this group of uh, members you know that kind of eligibility rules that you will be creating so we'll be creating some compensation rules now um, the, and we'll see uh, to proceed with you know other compensation configurations in our tomorrow session so the task to create compensation eligibility rule is uh, create compensation eligibility so you'll be actually defining um, some kind of description um, so let's say 
uh, you wanted to restrict this to specific uh, organizations abo uh, vice president uh, whatever you know the eligible title that you are defining if you wanted to specify to specific uh, the, the supervisor organization or specific uh, job level team members you'll be specifying just to identify easily whenever you are actually configuring this to be components okay so now i'll be giving um, kind of uh, uh, the supervisor organization name i'll be giving comp eligibility rule organization okay so i'm creating one eligibility rule for the organization uh, who is managing as a director for a tax team actually okay so just to identify easily but naming convention um, probably according to your um, the organization naming convention standards you can follow so to, just to identify easily <coughs> i've created an eligibility rule for the organization um, who is managing as a director tax i've just given that kind of name here <coughs> okay and if you go to actual fields so you can give um, uh, here you know you'll be actually selecting those organizations actually so whatever organization that you wanted to have there will be a lot of screens you know that will be going for the same kind of configurations just you need to follow the um, steps on each screen that we are actually doing so I've selected this one where I'll be actually selecting the actual organizations that I wanted to have. So I've created um, one of the organization um, <clears throat> So where uh, this guy, this guy Melissa is actually holding this organization, whose um, job profile is something related to taxation um, in direct uh, in directory. So that is the reason why just to identify whatever eligibility rule that I am creating, I have defined. Um, <coughs> So for this uh, organization, I'm actually creating this eligibility rule, which will be applicable for uh, this organization where all these are the members of this organization. Okay, so I'll be specifying this organization here. So I'll just specify it. So now once you define this eligibility rule, you can um, submit this one just to have your eligibility rule created i'll be just saving it somewhere so now i have eligibility rule created okay so now uh, if i wanted to add anything or create um, uh, one more eligibility rule based on the managers okay so now we have created based on the organizations now let's say if we wanted to assign based on the management levels like let's say executive uh, team or in a CEO of the company or executive vice president of the company the same eligibility rule how do you create so same task create compensation eligibility rule Comp eligibility rule. First, manager and above management level. So kind of eligible rule that you have named it for all the managers and upper management levels you are creating this one and in the field of eligibility rule you'll be selecting that management level
So you have selected management level and there you will be selecting what all the management level should be applicable for this eligibility rule. And I can see board of directors. And the CEO of the company. Vice President, Director, and Manager, because we have selected a um, kind of you know ma manager and above, so we'll be selecting manager also. So manager will be part of uh, this eligibility rule where you now we'll be assigning compensation. Okay. So now these are all the groups you know that we have who will be eligible of the rule that we are creating. If we are assigning to this to any kind of package or any kind of a, a compensation plan. So these are the groups who will be actually eligible for that particular compensation plan or compensation package. Okay. So that's how you know, typically define uh, <clears throat> or if you wanted to also um, restrict to only us uh, for all these uh, you know management level people who actually belongs to only us should be applicable for this kind of eligibility rules so what you will do so to the same condition you will add one more row you'll add one more row and it'll just give a country Here it is specifying if it is uh, if you wanted to restrict to any specific country like US and all, <clears throat> so here once you define the country, people of this management level, people who belongs to board of directors team and the CEO, vice president, and director and manager of these roles, um, who belongs to US should be applicable for this kind of eligibility rule that you are defining actually. Okay. I'll save this. So that you know when we are actually bundling everything together, we'll be using this um, composition eligibility rules and now we have eligibility rule that we have created where you know we have restricted you know some of the um, uh, some of the things for uh, you know specific uh, the, uh, group of people in US or specific uh, organization. Now let's define a kind of uh, grade actually compensation grade. <clears throat> they are just you know purely configuration. There is no logic or there is no kind of an expression that we are writing. Completely a kind of configurations. So if you wanted to have um, any particular number of segments that you wanted to populate uh, in compensation grade, you can give. By default, it will be populating four segments. Like let's say 15 to 20 lakhs is a kind of grade that you are planning. Okay, what is the you know lower range and what is the mid range? What is the top range that you wanted to specify? Uh, in that range, you know you can give um, such kind of segments that you wanted to populate. And also, if you wanted, yesterday I was uh, saying you that whenever you are creating compensation grade, if you check the checkbox called grade profiles, that will be showing that will be showing grade profiles when you get into compensation grade screen actually.
is how you know your compensation grade um, um, uh, you know grade skin will be populating once you submit that one So if you once you have a compensation grade that is created, and uh, in future, and if you wanted to inactivate that one, you can you know check this checkbox so that um, that will get inactivated. And uh, so before you do inactivate, whatever grade that you've already you know triggered for a group of team members, you need to actually remove that one and make this active, make this inactive actually. I mean, this task. Yeah, these are actually straightforward. Um, the whatever eligibility rule that we have created is just you know assigning a specific group of members or organizations yeah. uh, to whom you wanted to restrict. Once you have all the configurations, you know we'll be assigning this to a compensation package, where you'll be calling all those things and you'll be assigning to different uh, you know packages actually, so mm -hmm. single package, so that uh, whatever you know you're creating compensation grade eligibility rules will be uh, applicable for those group of members. Yeah. If you feel that you know this is loading, probably we can uh, stop it here. If you feel that you know it is giving um, too much information for you, probably you know we can stop it and uh, we can um, uh, you know continue for, in our next session. If you're yeah, feeling yeah, some kind of you know load. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, this is we should stop now. I think this. Is good. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Then so what we'll do is um, we have created two eligibility rules now. Okay. So mm -hmm. what we'll do in our upcoming session is we'll create a compensation grade. Um, uh, we'll create a one compensation plan, either you know fuel plan, fuel alliance plan, or any of specific alliance plan. And once we have all the components ready, we'll be creating one compensation package where whatever you know the eligibility rules that we have created will be applicable for those um, team members actually. Okay. So. So we'll just uh, you know make note that we are uh, we have created uh, two eligibility rules and we'll be actually uh, <clears throat> proceeding with our compensation grades plans and packages and finally we'll bundle everything together and make it as a kind of you know a compensation whole compensation package which can be assigned to employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the instance I have in your instance is it same or different? I don't know what instance you have. Um, let me see. So, so I have a uh, uh, tenant called I admin DPT2 is um, tenant name I have. So, so you are having the same name. Let me just see. It, since I had no activity, it logged me out. Oh, okay. I think uh, that's a different tenant, I believe. But yeah, I think you know you can um, do the same steps actually. So whatever yeah, yeah. Know, task that I'm doing, I think uh, though tenant is same, but um, the configurations are same, right? You'll be having the same options, whatever you know, I'm getting now. These are actually delivered things. We are not actually creating a kind of custom configurations and all. So all these are in you know, a delivered task that is provided by Workday. You should be seeing the same task even in your tenant as well. Yeah. So for now, you know what you can do is uh, you can just try to create eligibility rule that we have discussed. Whether I have a admin access or what? Uh, if you go to your uh, this thing profile, I'm there. <clears throat> yeah, I'm on the profile. Yeah, uh, if you go to actions. Mm -hmm. Assign roles. If you go to security profile. Okay. Uh, view security groups. Okay. View security groups are there. If you click on the view security group, you'll be seeing what are all the security that is assigned for you. And if you wanted to know whether you have provided with the compensation administrator access, you can just filter uh, with security group. Yeah, I see that comp admin. I see. So you see here compensation. Yeah. I don't have sysadmin. I think but I have comp admin. 
So you'll be seeing compensation administrator. If it is not there, you can check this one. So that will be filtered, showing that what all the access you have related to compensation. Okay. So you are assigned with unconstrained uh, security group. Unconstrained is nothing but which provides uh, unlimited access. If you are provided with the constrained group, which provides limited access. Okay. Okay. Okay, and if you wanted to assign any kind of uh, the security groups that you don't have, similarly, as how we know we have gone, mm -hmm. there is a task called assign user based security groups in the same security profile. If you go, if you wanted to assign any kind of security administrator, I'm not sure whether they have provided access to assign security administrator, but yeah, so you are allowed to assign any kind of security group. Assign user based security group is there. If you click on this one, so you can assign so you are saying system administrator, which is nothing but a security administrator. Mm -hmm. It's already assigned. Okay, so this is the kind of you know delivered um, security administrator security that is provided by Workday. Okay. If this is assigned to you, you can make any kind of security changes in Workday. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, got it. Good, then we'll catch up again tomorrow and um, just try to create um, the compensation. So just go to compensation eligibility rule task. Just assign one this to one of the organization that you are aware of. Mm -hmm. and probably can pick any of the existing organization or if you know how to create organization just create that organization and pick that organization in that eligibility rule and one more thing just select the management levels that we have which is manager yeah. and above okay from manager okay. whatever and you see the upper level uh, management level, pick those mm -hmm. okay I'll do so that. with that i think you know we should be ready with eligibility rules then whatever you know we'll be creating grades packages and all we'll be assigning the eligibility rules to those packages in our tomorrow session